We're here to visit Mike. <laughs> Hi everybody, we're uh, back here at Mike Roberts' house, or Michael Roberts' house, uh, in Hacienda Heights. It's a beautiful, look, look uh, you gotta check out this view. You gotta check out this view. I'm jealous. I don't even have a view like this. Look at that view. Multi-million dollar view, look at that. All right, I'm jealous. All right, back to his trees. Hi, Mike. Thank Good you for uh, letting us come by, especially during COVID. I see we might go back to lockdown, so this is a great time to come out and visit other people's trees before we go back. But um, you're a man that is known for elms, cork oaks, deciduous trees, apparently black pines too, man. You know, I'm, I'm very, uh, I'm, I'm off shock in this, this backyard is beautiful. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> how long have you been here? I mean, it's really quick. How long about have you been here? About 20 years. We've been in this house about 20 years. And this house wasn't very well taken care of. It had been uh, foreclosed on and we got it for a song 20 years ago. And it's been a real project. You get it at a good price, but you pay for what you <laughs> for what you get, right? And so we've added a patio on, big patio. We're adding another one onto the other side. Uh, done a lot of work uh, on the on the landscaping, the hardscape. Put in retaining walls, <clears throat> and haven't done too much planting in the yard yet. But hope to very soon. I'm going to be retiring by the end of the year, and. Uh, I'm guess. really looking forward to you getting guys, You got some hobbies to do now. Got some <laughs> real time to, to spend at home and do some some work. And I noticed uh, this is almost like a real, really groomed bonsai court. I mean, you have your stands, you have everything like set to go. It's, it's uh, to me, it's better than Huntington just because it's, you know, it's, it's more that home, you know, that home feeling you, um, versus bonsai courts. In, in Huntington Library is really beautiful. It's, it's, it's cold. I, I'm not. I'm not sure how that translates really well, but um, this has a really good homey feeling. I mean, it feels. It, it feels. You know, it's like I want to come visit here. You know, that's that's how nice it looks. So, um, if you get a chance, everybody, if Michael opens up, you know, you got to come and check out uh, his. How the setup? Setup is really nice, and we'll talk about that when we go about around. Um, but really quick, um, one or two trees while we're here. Any any tree you want to talk about? Uh, your elms or um, the uh, wing elm right here we have in the front. Okay, so a couple of trees that, that I think you're talking about. This, first of all, this this elm and the other two over here were pretty much the first trees that uh, I had. And the reason why I started with these was I like corky barks. I like deciduous trees. Oh, we gotta check out this bark. So let's, let's <coughs> check out these bark. Look at these. Look at that. They're like plates, They're like little armor plates. Look at that. That's my finger. Look how big these plates are. Yeah, look at this. Yeah, and I have small hands, but Michael does have small hands. Look at that. It's, it's beautiful. So, and I, I grew, all, before I had benches out here, I grew everything in boxes. And um, because I didn't have benches and it wasn't this well laid out, I just set them on top of gravel in, in a quiet spot and kept them moist and watered. What I found was that the roots would come out the bottoms of the box or out the sides of the box, and you would start getting a lot of... Uh, a lot of heavy growth out of them. And so these, all of these elms grew really, really hard for the first few years. The, swole, the, the trunk swole up really good. And then as you start to um, put them up onto benches and get them off of the ground, you could push them back. And that's when you start to build ramification. How think, old is that tree anyways? I mean, it looks, to me, it looks like at least 20, 20, 30, 40 years. Well, okay, so easy easy thing. I should probably tell you that I got this tree from Bobby Pressler. Oh, Bob Pressler. <laughs> when I very first started out. I, you know, I went, like everybody, when you're very first starting out, you go around and you visit all the nurseries that you can. And Bob's was one of the nurseries I went to. And he was just, I think he was only in that nursery for about two or three years when he very first started. Oh, so this was in the early 80s. They were talking about early 80s. No, it, no? Was, it was like 91, 92, really? oh. right in there. Okay. I don't, did he start in the early 80s? I thought he started in the early 80s, but I could be wrong. He may have started bonsai, but I think he, I don't think he was in that nursery until in the late uh, 80s or early 90s. Okay. That's my thought. But anyway, I went there and I asked him for uh, corky trees, cork elms, uh -huh. and cork, uh, cork maple, or cork uh, oaks. 
And he said, I've got a couple of elms. And he started showing me he had a really nice one that I wanted to buy from him. And he goes, not for sale. And he showed me this tree, which came up. It was about, I don't know, about as big, that big around. Okay. Talk about came up, came and up and made like a hard left-hand turn. It just was ugly as sin. It barely, all it had on it was a little bit of trunk. <laughs> And I brought it home and cut that off and put it into a box and started growing it. And I, I think the next thing I did was I started going to uh, Gary Ishi's, Gary and Moss Ishi, mm -hmm. Ishi's. Uh, and Moss liked this tree a lot and it started helping me um, with branch placement and stuff like that. Used to be you could go to, to the Ishi's on, for a Sunday, there's their Sunday sessions were like seven bucks. You could bring two trees and you worked from like seven in the morning until noon and uh you know moss was really good gary would be there and hang out with everybody and in, sort of interpret for his dad because his dad was pretty hard to understand a lot of the old japanese guys were hard to understand so you've been around you've been around this hobby for a while yeah okay <laughs> <laughs> you've been around for a while um what is what, what is your background how how did you get into bonsai um, I, you know, I, I'm uh, classically trained as a painter, artist. I have a, an MFA in, in painting and a BA in both sculpture and painting from San Jose oh. State University. And I f originally moved to LA, that was what I was trying to do. And it, um, it wasn't until I started working out in this area to support myself that I started getting into, you know, buying little trees and, you know, hanging out and working on it. And um, when things didn't pan out as an artist, it became, you know, the, what I spent all of my time doing. Uh -huh. So, uh, and it, as time goes along, I mean, like everybody, you collect more and more trees as you go along, so. You don't have many trees. I mean, the trees that you have, they're specimen trees, they're beautiful. So, I mean, you're not wasting time. Like, I, if you come in my house now, you see it's a waste of time. It's like, you know, a couple hundred, you know, a couple of trees running around. But you have a very select, I mean, you, you put your time, it shows that you put your time into your, your quality trees. So. Well, and I try to keep it um, w within what I have time for. Mm -hmm. You know, I mean, you know, you've got to feed them. You've got to buy pots for them. you got to, you know, water every day. And I don't have... You know, Ed Clark, I wouldn't be able to do what Ed Clark does. I don't I mean, think anybody has time what Ed Clark does. <laughs> that guy is amazing, you know. I just, I am, I'm flabbergasted every time I go up there at the amount of material that that man takes care of. Oh, yeah. And um, I can't do that. I, you know, I keep, I, you know, I try to limit to myself to, you know, about 35 or 50 trees and you know, just take really good care of them. So that's, that's where I'm at. And it shows, Mike. It, it does, totally shows. Coming here, it, your trees are awesome looking. Okay. Uh, you want to talk about that uh, wing elm right there, right in okay, the front. So, um, before I started with the Ishis, I, I found uh, the Yamaguchis, and they're over in West LA. I don't know if you guys ever go to the uh, Yamaguchi nursery, but... Uh, we had a video, we did, we did a video earlier in spring with them. So if anyone wants to check out the video, be my guest. <laughs> okay. <laughs> So, and they have a lot, they used to have a lot of bonsai material over there as well as the nursery portion of it. I'm not too sure how, how much material Marianne has now, but I bought this from Marianne's dad, George Yamaguchi, when it was very first starting out. It's maybe, maybe the second or third oldest tree I've got in here. But when I was, I was looking for real corky material, he showed me this wing down and it had a really funky trunk on it with a big, root coming off the front here that looked really ugly when it was much smaller so with his help I got uh, one of John Naka's books and it showed me how to air layer and I early one spring started to work on an air layer out of here and was able able to get the top off get it planted and had 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 it successfully growing I was really proud of it and uh, my daughter's or my wife's daughter had a dog zipper and decided that that looked like a fun thing to chew on. So she, he yanked it right out of the pot and chewed it all up. And I got stuck with the ugly bottom. <laughs> so, And this, how many years later is this now? Well, so it's gotta be, you know, 25, 30, almost 30 years. These actually grow really slow. 
they, they, they put out a first flush and they'll run really hard. As soon as you cut them, they're pretty much done. So they don't, they, it's tough to get them to back, but you, you have to let them run to get any kind of going and then you, you cut them and it's just a little bit, little bit after that. So um, may, people may not know what wing elms are. Um, do you have any, wing, any wings on the elm particularly right now that we can show I, off? I, I break those off a lot of times. I don't see any, that, oh, here we go. You can see it right here. So a wing elm uh, has that really long protrusion on its bark and it actually happens um can you describe where it, ha it just happens random for it, me it looks randomly it's it's kind of random and it's generally on newer growth you don't hardly ever see it on the old growth so once you break this off to kind of make it look normal <laughs> it it, uh, it won't come back it only uh, happens out on the tips of the newer growth so um over the years i've busted a lot of that stuff off and over the years, it kind of started to minimize. But every every uh, every winter, I have to go in and kind of clean up a little bit more. Yeah, it's kind of like um, cork bark um, pines. The the three the three the the, the three the three variety it has that weird barkiness that comes yes, out of it. And they generally come up in in you're right in threes. Yeah, kind of the same kind of a deal. Yeah. yeah. So if anybody wants to know. Um, I think San Gabriel Nursery has one or two tr big trees left. I've seen them have two or three big trees left. If you guys are interested, there I think they have some I material. Think Bob Pressler still has some um, some winged elm stuff. Too. Maybe, maybe well, cedar is cedar elms and winged elm the same thing? Almost. It's not quite. Um, cedar elms are a little uh, tougher. They're hard. They're hard. They're. I, I don't like, know the difference of all yeah. elms yet. So, oh, well, we'll we'll keep talking. Let's let me turn around here. I, I mean, he has some. Mike has some really quality tree here. Let me turn around here. Look, look how beautiful this looks. Look at that. We got to talk about the tree at the very end. I mean, that, that has some really good fall colors. Walk over there really quick. Oh, got some really good fall color. So, um. You know, from hearing from growers to get fall color, some people say you got to... talking about the... Yes, that one's just... Marietta plum. So this, I air layered off of um, a plum tree at my dad's farm. He used to grow um, plums, but the, he had for just in the yard had grown some Marietta plum because it's really hardy. They use this in the, in the valley, they use this for uh, rootstock. And so they'll get a good solid root base going and then they'll cut it off and graft on varieties that aren't so you know strong against pests pests and diseases and stuff like that but are really good fruit like catalina and you know whatever else you can think of santa roses and all that kind of stuff but the rootstock really has, it it's what it has these little tiny flowers that come up single whites that are just gorgeous and to me it's a really really fun uh, material to use for bonsai and it's the only thing I have left from my dad's oh. and so this is a real special tree to me does a fruit by the way does it ha it does it gets this little tiny <laughs> so white red bitter plum on it that are they're just gorgeous they're really really beautiful so do they do they stay on at all or they fall off like most fruit they, they will stay on and ripen and fall off, you know, if you're careful about how, you know, not touching them and stuff, they, they stay on until they're fully ripe. Oh, that'd be kind of cool to look at one day, maybe. I ate a couple of them this year and bring, to remind myself well, how bitter it was. <laughs> not so good. So is the scale really good for bonsai? I mean, the, the, the scale. The, it, the scale of it's good. They don't really, um, it doesn't really set fruit fast enough. I mean, this tree will be full of set fruit, but it, it won't. It won't, it, it won't stay on. It won't stay on. You get, if you get, you know, I think this year I had a dozen that stayed on out oh, of everything that got set. And so, um, you know, but they're bright red and all inside there and it looks really neat. Well, that's pretty cool looking. <laughs> There's a tree in the background you need to talk about. What, the maple here? Yeah, the maple right there. So here's another tree that I, grew, I, I had in a box and had it setting, sitting on the... Um, on the ground and you can see that the trunk wait, wait say that one more time so this is not a in-ground tree grown tree but it's on the ground right so what i like to do is put stuff into cedar boxes and set it on the on the you can see like this set it on the gravel and what happens is that it puts roots through 
and um, they grow they, they grow really fast What's, okay what the trick here is that you have to make sure that you maintain lower branches you know a lot of people um, try to grow stuff in ground or on the ground and they don't maintain lower branches and that's really really important if you're going to do this so you have to be um, really diligent about getting them out pulling up a branch encouraging the bottom branches and then you once you let them run you've got lots of material to work with when the time comes so that that maple is then the same method as on the ground in boxes exactly so instead of field grown this is it's on ground We're, what we talked about one of ed clark's um videos it's growing on the ground versus in the ground right 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 exactly he he does it really well i just do it a little differently than he does well everybody has a different technique i mean you know what there's there's nothing wrong the only no. the only no. the best thing is to experiment and really to uh grow your own trees i mean that that's probably the the most economical way in this in this hobby to really get your materials exactly but I, let's talk about that tree so it's i mean it's 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 hard to see i i'm sorry we don't have a solid background but it, it's 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 a trident maple if i'm looking at that correctly yes um at least 20 years just looking at the 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 disfoliating it's bark i 20, see about 20 years old i don't see and that's spot on look at that um this this tree actually was grown from seed as were all of those those i got from uh matt Uiga. i don't know how to say matt's last name but um he sent those to me in a in a fedex envelope all wrapped up <laughs> in, a, in a baggie and paper towels and, and you know i I plant them in little tiny pots to get them to get them running and then move them into boxes and start this process. This is like about the third phase. These things are about six years old now. Okay. And so, um, but this one here, this, these seed, this seedling um, came from a, a good friend of my dad's who lived up in Los Gatos. And when she found out that I was uh, growing bonsai, she she pulled off a couple of seedlings and gave them to me. So I have I have this one, and I have this one, and this one, and that one right All there. All the same variety. All from her. And do you know it's 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 just a re, it's just a wild type, just a pull a seedling from her yard. Yeah. She had she had uh, trident maple in the neighbor's yard. And then she would go out and they would, all the seeds would fall into her garden, which she kept a really beautiful garden. And so she would dig these things up and put them in little pots and give them to my dad and he'd give them, <laughs> save them off for me. So, uh, you know, this one is probably the most successful. This is a, like a three, three uh, trunk deal. I don't know if you can, see, how good you can see. Oh, that. we can see that. I had a real problem with this one um, about, oh, maybe a year ago. Why? I mean, it got too hot. I defoliated this thing and it was pushing out all its little buds and it got up to like 120 and just absolutely killed everything. And I'm, and you're, this is like, you're in a little, uh, I mean, you get, um, was it Western, you get a, a block on the Western exposure. How much sunlight do you get here technically? I, on the summertime, you get a full eight hours of. of In the wintertime, we talk about maybe five, five, or five. Six. Okay. Yeah. So, so you still you still get some burn out here. Oh well, yeah, this so this tree completely burnt, and you know this I've had to rebuild this whole trunk here. I mean, this thing was almost ready to go into a pot and start looking really good, and, oh. and you know this whole thing died off all the way back to the, just the first two branches. So I'm trying to rebuild this. Oh wow, the whole tree died. I mean, the whole the whole trunk line died. This whole trunk line died back to the first two branches. So you can see right here where I had to had to regrow it from here all up. This is only about three years old. So you're talking about right there. here, that scar right there. Yeah. That was a cut scar. That was probably the, the original yep. trunk line right yep. there. Yep, this is all about three years worth of growth right there. So it's come back really strong. You know, you keep them in boxes, keep them wet, keep them moist. The boxes work really good because they, you can see how moist they keep. So, um, you said cedar. Why not redwood or like well, redwood or Douglas or too. Douglas it's, fir? Is there any? Doug, Doug fir rots out too fast. Okay, so Doug fir is not not cedar and redwood are really good box material. It's basically all this is is rough cut fence material mm -hmm. 
from you know Home Depot or Lowe's or any of those places. It comes in two widths. There's a narrow width that's about three and a half, and then there's a wider width that's about five and a half. And so I just get that stuff, and I can either rip it to be the the depth that I want, or I can uh, or I can just use it the way it is. But almost every single one of these boxes is just Home Depot fence material. So I mean, it's I mean, it's something that people don't get to learn. I mean, it's usually taught for someone else, but it, right. it's so. I use redwood just because it's, you know, it's available. It's just yeah. what available, but no, that's available. why I asked. I was like, cedar? Cedar's versus a little cheaper than, uh, than, than redwood is. Okay. Redwood is, um, redwood fence material, and they, all, they both last about the same length of time. It doesn't really matter, so buy what you can afford. All right. So, that, I mean, there you go. <laughs> that's a great, great information here. Um, any other tree? Oh, we got to talk about your first, you have your first tree here? My first tree? Your first tree that you had in the ground? The olive? Oh, no. The, 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 oh, the, the, oh, you want to talk about gopher tree? Yeah, you gopher tree. <laughs> go, go for, it's not gopher wood tree, but it's a gopher tree. So, I, 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 By the way, I'm standing back a good, what, good seven, eight feet here. So, Mike, got to put your hand on the trunk so people kind of see how big that, that, that guy is. Oh, my. <laughs> it's not a small tree. It may look like a small tree, and that's the whole point of bonsai. This is a big boy tree. I mean, this is big. This is it, it. This this tree was about about two and a half or three inches in diameter, and it was purchased to go into the ground. And um, I planted it in the late fall, and by early spring, January, February, we started having gophers getting into it, and we did everything we could to get rid of the gophers and couldn't and I came out one morning early in March and the thing was flat laying on the ground it had chewed that thing completely off and it was just like on the ground and I dragged it into the studio and cut off the top and bottom and stuck it into a five gallon pail of Akadama and put it up against the wall over there and within probably two weeks I had sprouts all over the trunk so this is basically an air layered trunk because <laughs> <laughs> hey, the gopher ate most of the roots away most it of the tap root. Ate, it had no roots oh, i had no roots i cut off the bottom and the top there were no roots it was well, a giant cutting <laughs> it was just a giant cutting that i stuck into a five gallon pail of akadama and this is it 20 22 23 years later so this has been pot grown on the ground for what 15 years 20 years i i grew this in boxes up until about five years ago, I put it into a pot and showed it. And um, just be, it was a complete bush. It had, you know, a lower branch down here. It was, it wasn't very well, um, it, it didn't look like bonsai too much. It was just a neat looking big trunk and um, got a lot of feedback on it from, from everybody. But the most feedback I got was you need to open it up. You need to, you know, make it into more of a, a tree look, which mm -hmm. is what you would expect. I mean, it was, so this is it three years later now. I've, I've gotten back into a box. I've opened it up and uh, started growing. I took off the bottom branch and I'm pulling this one down. This branch starts clear back up here someplace. So how do you keep your uh, lower branches healthy? Um, I, on, I, on these oaks? On, on oaks, on elms, on any trees, because that's the hardest part. You know, we know the top is eight, top, eight, 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 uh, was it? Um, the apex? Apex is always dominant. Right. And the lower branch is always weaker. How do you keep your trees so, looking so good? Obviously, good drainage, feed them and water them, you know, all of the regular stuff. But you, I like to let my lower branches, particularly in early on, grow as fast and hard as they can and I and I do everything I can to encourage them to go I just tie them down and, and let them run and then at some point you start pushing it back and letting them ramify and you keep pushing the tops down so it forces all the energy into the lower branches and uh, over time the tree will resp to, respond to it yeah that learns to supply the lower branches more than the if you start trying to shape a tree too early on and, and working with, you know, it, almost always you're going to be cutting these things and they're just going to become weaker and weaker and fall off at some point. They'll just die. 
So let them run. Like junipers, don't pinch them. Just let them grow and then uh, cut them back yeah. where you need them. Yeah. So not until you get close to the end. I mean, I every single one of these, this, the branch on this tree, this lower branch on this and this one over here, these things were grown. I let those grow clear out to here at one point. Oh, wow. And pushed them way back, you know. This tree over here, this elm here, you can still see the scars from where I... I, I cut them off. So how far I, How far did you let them grow then? This, this one was like this. This was a monster branch. And this one over here, same thing. And then you, you cut them back hard. And when they've got that much energy underneath there, then they bud back really fast. And oh, then yeah. You can start, then you can start um, ramifying it. And then the trick is to just, but once it learns to, to feed those branches, then it seems to hold up pretty well and I think that if you continue to do that you know every once in a while let a branch really run and mm -hmm. cut it right back it'll keep it strong like that that's that's what you need to oh, do that's good it works for me let's talk about your your first tree over there which one is that your olive, you want to go to the olive? so everybody has a first tree mine I think mine is uh Lindsay owns it now and this is Mike's first tree, which is, it's impressive. It's a small tree, Mike, what's wrong with it? <laughs> <laughs> so this, this tree also was um, purchased to be uh, a yard tree. And I got it early on, as soon as I moved in, started living in houses, I started, bought a five gallon can olive. And that's all I've ever done is, <laughs> you know, put it in the yard thinking, okay, this is going in. And for the first, you know, seven or eight years, I just, kept pulling it up and moving it to each look new at house the and, look at the taper on this guy and this has been box grown too or has it been in the ground it, well it was it was box grown beginning about 15 years ago actually it was i kept no that's not completely true it was a five gallon can and then it and then i bought a 16 16 inch box and set that on the ground and so forth and so on but you know, those are like uh, nursery boxes, uh -huh. those big vertical deals like that. So it, it didn't go into a box that I built until about 15 years ago. Oh, so this, this guy's been with you for a while. Oh, usually. Almost, this probably is 30 years old. It's a so beautiful... I've it, had it for, for 30 years. you got to show this tree one day. It's, it's that beautiful. So, you know, Lindsay and uh, Joe were going to do the, that CBS show. Yes. Curate the C CBS show. And I, uh, Lindsay had a whole layout that he wanted to do, and I approached him about um, using this tree for that show, and he he was going to do it. We were all set up, and then they they went all COVID on us, and so it didn't happen. Well, now now people get to see your tree now. Look at this. <laughs> yeah, it's a different format, but right. people get to see your tree. It's awesome. I love your tree. Um, let's talk about your pine, because you know your people know you're known for the elms and for the. Um, the cork bark uh, oak. So let's talk about that one pine you have right there. Okay. You're, you're asking about Yes. This? Okay, so um, all of these pines were grown from seed uh, originally. And um, so this, but I acquired them after about five years. So uh, this tree I've been working on for probably and Kinji Miata is the one that's helped me mostly with this. He and Gary were instrumental in showing me how to work pines. Pines are like a whole different deal. You know? Oh, it is. And so, um, but this pine is just now to a point where I, I feel like it's ready to show. I so, think so. That's why I asked you. Yeah, it's, it's beautiful. So I, I have, uh, I've ordered a stand for it from... Uh, with, um, David Niddle. David. And David David is like the best stand maker I know. I mean, he he's real traditional, none of that fancy, you know, all over the place stuff, you know, make it up as you go along. He uses traditional uh, forms and he's really careful about, he wants to know what your trees are gonna look like and how big they are, what kind of pots they're in so that he can make, help you make good decisions about how heavy the, the uh, table's gonna be. <clears throat> and what we came up with this is sort of a hybrid. It has a kind of a, a more sleek, uh, but it's round. 
and Ooh, a round table yeah huh? that's different and so it'll be it'll be really nice i'm looking forward to seeing this it's an awesome trip let me just zoom in on some of the needle look at the needle length is all identical that's tough to do do you have your needles the same length without cutting the needles that that is that, that is a true i mean sign that this tree has been really well taken care of so you're, you've been timing that that pruning really well one more tree you want to talk about something unusual that you have well, there's a cork oak forest right here. Oh, that's, that's totally different. So, so this this tree actually had a little problem. So we had, um, about four years ago, we had a really bad heat mm -hmm. problem here. And this tree here suffered as a result of it. So um, you can see that I lost this this main branch right here. and But I got this one here as a shoot to come off of it. Oh, it's, it's dead. Oh, I, I thought it was part of that branch. <laughs> so this is this is dead. It needs a little bit more carving, but I kind of wanted to see. So, but this is really kind that, of a unique look. It is. You know, I, this is the first time seeing a um, cork forest. Yes, and, and it's it has good taper. Let me let me zoom in again. Um, that that's one thing that always stands out. Cork um, uh, oaks have this, I mean, they, they straight pipes. They go like straight pipes. Right. Getting taper, getting taper like that well, that's difficult. I, I can tell you just by growing um, a couple at home before, I mean, they just grow like straight pipes. But that taper, that's awesome. I mean, you, you can't get that. So this this tree wasn't, this is the strongest of all three, this, this in the back. The one right in the back. So the, the, my problem with this is always to make this the dominant tree when it wasn't the strongest tree. And so I've been letting it run and, and trying to get it to where it is now. So now it's at about the right height. But as a result of doing that, this area in here, you can see, has suffered. It's not as neat, full as it needs to be. Mm -hmm. And so before I'll be able to show this, I need to do a lot of... Um, you need to let these this side run and get strong and and start working it back and keep that stuff under control oh well, now we know mike's secret of how to get these lower branches <laughs> to go is let them go let them grow and let them go until you're ready to to um, put them in a pot but it's awesome mike uh one or two tips before we get going one or two tips for uh, our club members about growing trees or bonsai um I, you know I, I am really proud of the Bicoin family. I think they're all, all of the older members there share as much information as they can. And it's, uh, it's, it's a good club. Lindsay's there, Joe's you know, beginning to teach. I know Tom's doing all of these videos. You know, Shirley steps up all the time. She volunteers for everything. I can't imagine a better club to be in particularly if you like deciduous trees. So, uh, and the, I, I know that all of the guys in the club that have any experience with anything, like if anybody were to come to me and want help with an oak or an elm or any of that stuff, I'd be more than happy to sit down with them and show them what I do to get my trees the way they are. And, you know, there's no secrets. So join a club, join be a, social, right? connect I, with other people. Southern California has a, is one of the first homes for bonsai and it is completely rich there's tons of uh, material to work with there's all of the soils access to pots access to knowledge there's no reason why you would be growing bonsai in southern california and not understand what you were doing so all right awesome man thank you mike for your time today uh, i hope to see you uh, soon again man face to face looking thank forward to it Tom. again if you guys like this video share share like and i'll see you guys on the flip side